Okay, so here we've got some really interesting collections of numbers. If you compare 1, 5 and 6 with 2, 3 and 7, you'll see that the sums are equal, but also the sum of squares are equal. And we've got an even more interesting case here where 1, 5, 8 and 12 versus 2, 3, 10 and 11, the sum is equal, the sum of the squares are equal, and also the sum of cubes are equal. So the purpose of this video is to shed some light on where these kind of number curiosities come from, because it's not just trial and error. So we'll start by first of all showing a method to generate examples like this first case where the sum and sum of squares are equal, then we'll build up to this more complicated case including the sum of cubes as well. So the rules of the game here are we need to have positive integers, we don't want any repetition, and we also don't want to include zero. So we're essentially looking for distinct positive integers a, b, c, d, e and f, so that the sum of a, b, c is equal to the sum of d, e and f, and also we want the sum of squares to be equal. So a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to d squared plus e squared plus f squared. So our first step in generating an example like this is just choosing six integers where we can split them up so that three of them have the same sum as another three. And this is probably my favorite step in everything we're going to cover here because it's so elegant. A nice way of generating six such integers is we switch to capital letters, a plus b plus c, plus d we know is equal to itself. And then we can just group these terms together to a plus b, c and d, and we'll leave this a and b alone, and then we'll have a c plus d here. So if we choose these carefully so that a plus b isn't equal to c or d, and similarly c plus d can't be equal to a or b, we'll have six distinct integers whose sum are the same when split up into three like this. And this turns out to be really useful now because we want the sum of all of the squares to be equal. So we want a plus b all squared plus c squared plus d squared. We want this to be equal to a squared plus b squared plus c plus d all squared. So when we expand the brackets here, we'll get lots of cancellation, as we'll see. So a squared plus b squared plus 2ab plus c squared plus d squared. We want this to be equal to a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared and plus 2cd from expanding the bracket there. So you'll see immediately that you've got a squared, b squared, c squared and that should be a d squared. Those terms all cancel out with each other. So all we're left with then is we want this to hold the sum of squares to be equal. This holds if and only if 2ab equals 2cd. So this is true if and only if ab equals cd. So now we just need to choose our a, b, c, and d carefully so that we avoid repetition and also so that a, b is equal to c, d. So to pick integers so that a, b is equal to c, d, you can just choose any integer which isn't a prime number. So for example, 6 you can write as 1 times 6 but also as 2 times 3. And you want to avoid prime numbers because this would lead to repetition. You actually also want to avoid the square of a prime number as well because this would also lead to some repetition with your a, b, c, and d. So here we've got a sensible suggestion then, a is 1, b is 6, c is 2, d is 3. Let's see if this works. So you want a plus b, 1 plus 6 is 7, plus c is 2, plus d is 3. Then we want to see if this is equal to a plus b, so 1, plus 6, and then c plus d is 5. So this is actually no longer in ascending order, but it's actually our example from the start. So we don't even need to verify here that the squares their sum as, uh, equal, because we've already done the algebra, we know that AB equals CD, so this is going to work. But if you're interested, you can verify that the sums of squares are also equal here. So now you might get unlucky with your choice and end up with repetition, if you're not careful. So something like 18, for example, we can write this as 3 times 6, and also as 2 times 9. So then if we choose these as our A, B, C and D, respectively, you run into problems because your a plus b is 9, so you have plus 2 plus another 9, then this needs to be equal to 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 9 gives you 11. So while this is true, we've got the repetition of the 9 here, and also the sum of squares are going to be equal. So if you don't care about the repetition, this method is great for generating as many examples as you like. And you'll see that if we chose another number, let's say maybe 8, 1 times 8, 2 times 4, we can get lots where we don't have repetition. So you'd have a is 1, b is 8, c is 2, d is 4. So that gives us 9 plus 2 plus 4. This is going to be equal to 1 plus 8 plus 6. And then similarly for the sum 
of squares you can verify if you like. So now we've cracked the problem where you need to find two sets of three integers where the sums are equal and also the sum of squares are equal. So we can generate lots of different examples now. So now we're ready to look for distinct positive integers. So the a, b, c and d, their sum is equal to that of e, f, g and h and similarly for the sum of squares and the sum of cubes. We've just written this slightly more compactly, k is 1, 2 and 3, to cover the different cases. So we'll take a slightly different approach here. We'll actually start by generating some examples which involve negatives, but then later we'll tweak the numbers so that we get some positive integers which all work out. So how do we make a start so that the sums are equal? Well, we're actually just going to, now that we're allowed to use negatives, we can use a plus minus a plus b plus minus b for our a, b, c and d. And then we know that this is going to be equal to c plus minus c plus d plus minus d, because all of this is just equal to zero. And this is really nice as well, because we want the sum of cubes to be equal. And a cubed plus minus a cubed, this also just cancels out. And similarly for our b and minus b cubed. So all of this is equal to the same with c plus minus c cubed plus d cubed plus minus d cubed, and all just equal to zero. So by choosing a, b, c and d like this, all we really care about now is we want the sum of the squares to be equal. So we want a squared plus minus a squared plus b squared plus minus b squared to be equal to c squared plus minus c squared plus d squared plus minus d squared. So we can collect like terms here. We get that this is true if and only if 2a squared plus 2b squared equals 2c squared plus 2d squared. So taking away the factor of 2, we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared plus d squared. So now I'm going to write this in a slightly different way. We'll actually take away b squared and c squared from each side. So a squared minus c squared is equal to d squared minus b squared. And the reason that I've done this is so that then we can use the difference of two squares identity. a plus c, a minus c has to be equal to d plus b, d minus b. So then just like before, we're going to look for composite numbers which you can express in a product as two different ways and that will give us some idea of what to choose for our a plus c, a minus c, d plus b, and d minus b. So we could try something like 8, because we can write 8 as 4 times 2, and also as 8 times 1. So this suggests you would take a plus c is equal to 4, a minus c is equal to 2. So solving simultaneously, you would get a is equal to 3, and c is equal to 1. And moving on to d and b, you need the sum d plus b to be equal to 8, and you also need d minus b to be equal to 1. So effectively adding the two equations together, you get 2d is equal to 9. So you would need here d to be 4.5 and, and b to be 3.5. So we haven't got integers here, and the issue is that 1 and 8, these don't have the same sign. So you want them both to be odd, or you want them both to be even, so that when you add them together, 2d can be equal to an even number. So let's try something else. If we try 15, we shouldn't run into this problem, because 15, we can write as 15 times 1. We can also write it as 5 times 3, where the pairs of numbers are both odd. So this suggests then a plus c is 15, a minus c is 1. So we would take a is equal to 8, c is 7. And then for d and b, the sum is 5, d minus b is 3. So you would take d is 4, and b is 1. So we don't really need to check that this is going to work because we have already done all of the algebra. But this is essentially telling us now, in terms of our original equation, we take a is 8, so you have 8 to the k, and you also have a minus 8 to the k. Then we need to introduce our b, which is 1, so plus 1 to the k plus minus 1 to the k. This is going to be equal to our c, which is 7 to the k plus minus c minus 7 to the k plus 4 to the k plus minus 4 to the k from d. These are all going to be equal for k equals 1, 2, and 3. The only issue here is that we've got negative numbers. So how can we use this example where we've got negative integers to generate an example containing only positive integers? Well, there's a really simple trick we can apply, which is essentially just adding a constant to each of our integers here. And it turns out that this will preserve the properties that the sum is equal, the sum of squares is equal, and also the sum of cubes are equal. 
So here we've got minus 8 is our smallest negative number, so we could actually just add 9 to all of these and then we'll be left with just positive integers. So it's quite easy to see that when a plus b plus c plus d is equal to e plus f plus g plus h, adding a constant to all of these, so if we add 9 to all of these, just to illustrate, a plus 9 plus b plus 9 plus c plus 9 plus d plus 9, this is still going to be equal to e plus 9 plus f plus 9 plus g plus 9 plus h plus 9, because we've just added 36 to both sides of the same equation there. So what about the sum of squares property? Well, let's start by assuming that a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared is equal to e squared plus f squared plus g squared plus h squared. Then we add 9 to everything, so a plus 9 all squared, let's see what this implies, so b plus 9 all squared plus c plus 9 all squared plus d plus 9 all squared. First of all, just expanding the brackets and collecting some of the terms and grouping them, you'll have an a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared term. So we can just write our sum of squares. Then we'll also have a four lots of nine squared. So I'll just write plus four times nine squared. And then finally we have our middle term. So you'll have a two times nine times a, two times nine times b, and so on. So it's plus two times nine lots of a plus b plus c plus d. So now we know that this is equal to a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared is going to be the same as e squared plus f squared plus g squared plus h squared. And we'll leave the 4 times 9 squared alone. And our 2 times 9 we leave as it is. But our a plus b plus c plus d we know is equal to e plus f plus g plus h. So then if we were to factorise this, this turns out to be the exact same thing you would get if you'd expanded e plus 9 squared plus f plus 9 all squared plus g plus 9 all squared plus h plus 9 all squared. So then you can see that the sum of squares property is preserved. And there's nothing special about the choice of 9. You could have used any constant there. Finally, for our sum of cubes property, we can once again expand the brackets. And if we collect together the terms in a certain order, so first of all, have an a cubed, a b cubed, a c cubed, and a d cubed, then we'll also have a 3 times 9 times a squared, so 3 times 9 times a squared, we'll also have a 3 times 9 times b squared, and similarly for c and d. Then we'll have a 3 times 9 squared times a, and a 3 times 9 squared times b, and similarly for c and d, so we can write this in a nice way, and don't forget we also have four lots of 9 cubed to add at the end, so 4 times 9 cubed. So now we know that the sum of cubes, squares, and just the sum of a, b, c, and d, these are all equal to the equivalent expressions with e, f, g, and h. So we can replace this now by e cubed plus f cubed plus g cubed plus h cubed, and then we've got 3 times 9. Instead of a, b, c, and d, we write this as e squared plus f squared plus g squared plus h squared. We've also got 3 times 9 squared times e plus f plus g plus h because the sum of a, b, c and d is equal to the sum there. And we've still got our 4 times 9 cubed. And then you can see that this is indeed what you would get if you'd expanded e plus 9 cubed plus f plus 9 all cubed plus g plus 9 all cubed and finally plus h plus 9 all cubed. So you can see there that adding a constant, there's nothing special about our choice of 9. This also preserves the sum of cubes property. So now all that remains is to actually add 9 to each of our integers to give us a nice set of positive integers which satisfy our three equations. So we get 17 to the k plus 1 to the k plus 10 to the k plus 8 to the k. This is going to be equal to 16 to the k plus 2 to the k plus 13 to the k and finally plus 5 to the k where k is 1, 2, and 3. So we've got a set of positive integer solutions there. We'll just finish off by showing how we can generate further examples. So I'll show where the example from the very start of the video came from. So we used for this one as the starting point 40, and write this as 20 times 2, and also 10 times 4. So this suggests we should take a plus c equals 20, a minus c equals 2, 
d plus b is 10 and d minus b is 4. So then we see that a should be equal to 11, c should be 9, d is 7, and b is 3. So then taking plus or minus a, plus or minus b, plus or minus c and d as well, we get with our negative numbers a solution of 11 to the k plus minus 11 to the k plus, now remember a goes with b so it's 3 to the k plus minus 3 to the k. This is going to be equal to 9 to the k plus minus 9 to the k plus 7 to the k plus minus 7 to the power of k, where k is 1, 2 and 3. And we see that minus 11 is our smallest number, so we can add 12 to all of these. And this will give us now, with positive integers, 23 to the k plus 1 to the k plus 15 to the k plus 9 to the k is going to be equal to 21 to the k plus 3 to the k. Then we've got here plus 19 to the k plus 5 to the k. And you'll spot here that actually all of these integers are odd. So I'm going to add 1 to each of these. And then we can actually divide all of these by 2 by making them all even. So it turns out that you can see here if you were to divide all of your a, b, c, d, e, f, g and h by the same number or multiply them all by the same constant, it wouldn't affect the fact that the sum, the sum of squares and sum of cubes are all equal. So just adding 1 to all of these and then dividing by 2, you get 24 divided by 2 gives you 12 to the k. 1 plus 1 divided by 2 just gets you back to 1 to the k. 15 plus 1, 16 divided by 2 gets you to 8 to the k. 9 plus 1 divided by 2 gives you a 5 to the k. And this is going to be equal to 22 over 1 gives you 11 to the k. 3 to the k plus 1 is 4 divided by 2 gives you 2 to the k. 19 plus 1, 20, and divide by 2 gives you 10 to the k. And finally, 5 plus 1 divided by 2 gives you a 3 to the k, where k is equal to 1, 2, and 3. So if we were to put these in ascending order now, we'd be back to our example from the very beginning.